Tonight on the document, lies the government tells you. Federal Reserve Chair Ben Bernanke has repeatedly stated that he doesn't print money. Yet thanks to a lawsuit filed by Fox Business and Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve was forced to release 25,000 documents, revealing what has got to be the biggest bank fraud in history, that the Fed gave out $3.3 trillion to failing banks and companies across the globe. They did it in secret, and if it wasn't for this litigation, the world may never have known. So where did the Fed get this $3.3 trillion? The answer is they printed it. Well, they don't literally print it anymore. They just add zeros to electronic bank accounts and presto, instant money, but not sound money. Then, of course, there's the president's unconstitutional and undeclared war of choice in Libya. Libya posed no threat to the United States and yet bombs away. Morals and the Constitution be damned. But the president just can't get enough of misleading America. Both he and his Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, have been adamant that no Americans are on the ground in Libya. Take a listen. I said that America's role would be limited, and that we would not put ground troops into Libya. But news outlets across the globe, including the New York Times and Fox News, have discovered that Americans have been on the ground in Libya for weeks. Here now on the Fed and Libya and lies the government tells us are two of Congress's most principal members, Texas Republican Congressman Ron Paul and Ohio Democratic Congressman Dennis Kucinich. Congressman Paul, Congressman Kucinich, welcome here. Let me encourage each of you mm -hmm. to jump in on this so we can have a, a conversation amongst the three of us. But to Congressman Kucinich first, why are we dropping bombs on Libya? Is it oil? Is it military adventurism? Is it part of some grand scheme? Is it George Bush's third term? Why do you think we're there? I don't know that we can even get to that until we start by insisting that the president had no right to do that, that what he did was against the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, that it exceeds even the War Powers Act, that it exceeds the UN mandate, and that we have a, a presidency right now that uh, is dangerously close to being an imperial presidency because what, they're, what the White House is doing essentially is nullifying the role that Congress has. What is the Congress going to do about this, uh, Congressman Paul? I mean, is there anger? Is there angst there that he went to a bunch of Arab dictators called the Arab League, that he went to a bunch of NATO, NATO ministers in Belgium and a bunch of one-worlders on the Upper East Side of New York City called the UN Security Council? but never went to the Congress? Well, more than usual, and that's good, but I don't think there's enough. I don't, think, I don't see our leadership on either side of the aisle demanding that we do something and bring it to a vote and, and show exactly where we stand on this. So I'm afraid uh, we'll slip into a, an, another war again, uh, and, uh, and that's very unfortunate for us. But as far as why we're there, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, choosing on motives. But I think it's a form of neocolonialism, and that is part of the, uh, uh, you know, the neocons' effort to remake the Middle East and the whole world. You know, you ask about troops in, in Libya, and they, they fib or lie about that, whether the troops are, oh, the CIA, they're not troops, and yet they're the ones who launch the bombs and the missiles. But we have troops in so many places, so it's the philosophy of intervention. We have troops in probably 100 in 30 countries, 900 bases around the world. That's where the that's where the real problem is. Is uh, uh, some people who are now saying, "Well, Libya is different, and we shouldn't do it," and that's very good. But it's uh, sometimes it's partisanship. Well, the way we're doing this right. isn't as good as the way George Bush did it. So we have to think strategically as well as uh, uh, the process that we go through. Congressman Kucinich, I'm I'm a little. Um bewildered here about the silence of the leadership in both parties and in both houses. Could it be that Gaddafi has been so demonized that they really want him taken out? Could it be that they really want this war? Could it be that the big government party, which is most of the Democrats and most of the Republicans, like war after all, and, and so they want to look the other way when the president violates the Constitution and drops bombs on people? Um. I'm not sure, but I will tell you this, that as a Democrat, I feel that our leadership had the obligation, the minute that they were notified by President Obama, right. that, that, he, that he intended to participate in an attack on Libya. Our leadership had a responsibility right there to tell the President, wait a minute, Mr. President, you cannot do that without going to the entire Congress. So this is the complaint that I have about 
the Democratic leadership, and frankly, you know, as members of Congress, we, it's not really our right to give away. That right was put in the Constitution, you know, you know at, the, at the beginning of this country, right. so that there'd be a checks and balances, and, and we're, we're moving those checks and balances but aside in favor of an imperial president. Congressman Paul, I agree entirely with Congressman Kucinich. This is how freedom is lost. The president bombs and kills, takes power away from the Congress under the Constitution. The Congress does nothing about it, and then future presidents use what this president is doing as precedent for that behavior. This is how the Constitution is manipulated. This is how freedom is lost and lives are lost, and there are no consequences. Yeah, and, and it's been going on for a long time. It's probably the most amazing thing. The founders would be dumbfounded as to how easily the Congress gives up its responsibilities and prerogatives, and, and yet we continue to do it. And too many, it isn't sort of a complacency and a lack of an effort, but sometimes it's positive. Members of Congress and leadership have wanted to give these responsibilities because they believe in the strong executive. So we, in many ways, have given up on the belief of uh, limited government and smaller government and regional government and and we have gone toward the empire and right. a, a strong executive branch and that is very very discouraging and unless we break through on this uh, we're in big trouble and the only place that Dennis and I have talked about is we do get a lot of encouragement from our young people we're we're holding out for a little bit of optimism right switching I, I, I just want to I want to add one thing here but uh, you know what Congressman Paul says about the reach for empire is absolutely right but what we have to keep in mind is an empire is a big ticket item, and it's really beyond our uh, ability to pay for it. Abs absolutely. Switching gears, uh, gentlemen.